Hello Year 2 and welcome to your first online science lesson. Now today we're going to be carrying on with our last topic on everyday materials and if we were in the lesson today we would be doing our mid topic assessment which I've sent to your parents. But before you do that let's talk about some of the vocabulary we learnt last term. Can you remember what a natural material was? Yes that's right a natural Natural material is a material found in nature, so it could come from a plant, from an animal, or it could be found underground, couldn't it? Fantastic. Can you remember what, what a man-made material was? Yes, that's right. It's a material that's been made from another material, isn't it? So it's been changed. And lastly, can you remember what suitable means? Yes, that's right. If a, if a material is suitable to make a product, then it is a good choice of material to make that product. It could be because it's rough, it could be because it's smooth, could be because it was absorbent or um, hard or soft or waterproof. There are lots of different reasons why a material might be suitable to make a product. Now, pause the video here and complete your mid-topic assessment. Fantastic, how did you get on? Let's move on to today's learning. So today we're going to be looking at what different products are made from wood. Before we do that, let's recap on which materials were natural and which were man-made. So here you've got some pictures. You've got wood, wool, cotton, chalk, glass, paper and plastic. Pause the video and have a think. Are they natural or man-made? How did you get on? Let's talk through them together now. So we have the wood. Now wood is from trees, isn't it? So therefore it's found in nature and it's a natural material. Next we have the wool. Now wool is from an animal, isn't it? So therefore it's also a natural material. What about the cotton? Now there's a bit of a clue here. Look where the cotton's growing. Cotton grows on a plant, so therefore that's a natural material too. What about the glass? Can we find glass in nature? No, we can't, can we? So therefore it's a man-made material. It's made from another material. Can you remember which material it's made from? Yes, that's right, it's made from sand, isn't it? Well done for remembering that. Let's do the plastic next. Now, can we find plastic in nature? No, we can't, can we? So therefore it's a man-made material. Can you remember which material plastic is made from? Yes, that's right, it's made from oil, isn't it? Well done. Now what about the chalk? Yes, the chalk is a natural material. It's found in nature, well done. And lastly, the paper. Is, is paper found in nature? No, it's not, is it? So therefore that is also another man-made material. Well done for remembering all of that. Now here we have a piece of wood. What might this wood be used to make? Pause the video and have a think. What might this piece of wood be used to make? Okay, so wood can be used to make lots of different things. It could be used to make fences, it could be used to make ladders, a boat, pencils, lollipop sticks. There's lots of different things that can be made from wood. I'm sure you have lots of good ideas as well. But can you remember what man-made materials are made from wood? Yes, that's right. Paper and cardboard were made from wood, weren't they? But let's find out how. So firstly, a tree is chopped down. It's cut down. Then the bark is removed. Do you remember what the bark was? Yes, it's the rough bit of the trunk, isn't it? Fantastic. So that, that's taken off and then it's cut into wood chips. So it's broken down into little bits. After that, it's mashed to a pulp and cleaned. So like when you mash your potatoes for mashed potato, that's what happens to the wood chips. They get mashed up to a pulp and cleaned. After being cleaned, put into a machine and then the paper is cut and it's ready to sell and that's when we buy it in the shops. Now 
what I want you to do next is to look around your house and find products that are made from wood. These could be made from cardboard, from paper, or just from wood, because all of these materials come from wood, don't they? Okay, pause the video now and have a look around your house. Okay, did you find lots of different products made from wood? Because I did, shall I show you what I found? Okay, firstly, I found this spoon, okay, which is made from wood, and I use that for my baking, which I did a lot of over Christmas. And next, I found this envelope that was left over for when I was writing my Christmas cards to you. So this is made from paper, which is made from wood. Next, I found this ruler, which is made from wood as well. What else did I find? I found this plate, which is made from paper. I also found this, this ornament, which is made from wood. And lastly, I found this box, which is made from cardboard. So I found lots of different things in my house that are made from wood, whether they're paper, cardboard, or just wood. I'm sure you found lots of different things too, so well done. Now, your task is, it is Sam's first day in a factory, okay? And he needs to make paper, but he has no idea how to do this. So your task is to write him some instructions. Now, you can write these like normal instructions, or you can use the flowchart, which I've added um, to the email sent to your parents. OK, so you need to write him some instructions. Pause the video now and write your instructions for him. OK, have you finished writing your instructions? Will he understand them? Will he make the paper correctly? Fantastic. Well done. Now, our next question is, why do we write on paper and not on wood? Would a wooden exercise book be a sensible thing to have? Well, the answer is no, isn't it? Can you imagine how heavy a wooden exercise book would be? Paper's a lot lighter, isn't it? So therefore it's more sensible. Also, you can get lots of pieces of paper from one piece of wood. So therefore it's cheaper to buy paper than to buy wood to write on. So therefore it's more sensible. Now, it's great that we can make paper from trees. But we've also got to remember, why must we not waste paper? Why is it important that we recycle paper after we've used it? Now, let's look at this. So here's three pictures. We've got some animals in some trees. We've got some trees which have been cut down. and We've got a little plant there. So humans need a lot of trees to keep up with the demand for products. So people have to buy lots of paper in the shops, don't they? And that means we have to cut down lots and lots of trees. And did you know around 4 billion trees are cut down every year? When trees are cut down, it's called deforestation, and this causes lots of problems. So firstly, it damages the quality of the land. So therefore, it's harder to grow new plants. So like in the middle picture, those trees are all cut down. So now, the land isn't appropriate to build um, to grow new plants or new trees. Also, let's think about these animals in the trees. What happens when we cut these trees down? Well, they lose their habitat, don't they? And then there's the problem of endangered animals because they have nowhere to live. And lastly, trees produce oxygen, which almost all living things need to live and therefore it's very important that we look after our trees so next time you're using a piece of paper make sure you recycle it brilliant thank you for being so fantastic in the lesson today and i'm looking forward to our next science lesson where we'll be carrying on with our topic on everyday materials so bye year two